Cara Mariana, I would love to cook with you someday. I have a great meatball recipe. Well, ciao. I'm Mariana Esposito, and today is the day that we are going to make meatballs. And I'm inviting someone very special to cook with me, Lulu Sant'Angelo, who makes a really mean meatball. So stick around for hers and mine, Tuscan style. That's it, real fast, real fast. Come on, get that baseball arm moving. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Don't shake ketchup. No. <laughs> Basta. Sì. Sì. Sono molto delicato. Mm, molto delicato. Grazie a lei. Grazie, Mariana. Grazie a voi. You know, my mother's favorite leftover sandwich. Come on, you're Italian. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? Look at how pretty this is. It's delicious. How do you like that? I think, I think you're great. <laughs> And now we're ready to do the twist. So, looks gorgeous, smells wonderful. I use my hands. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> Before Lulu comes over today to make her famous meatballs, I'm going to make you a meatball recipe from Tuscany. And actually, this is something that I had when I was visiting my friend Edis in Florence. And this is the meatball that she makes, very typically Tuscan meatball. And to do it, you have to start by making a cream sauce, something the Italians call a bechamella, which means that in this little pot here, I've got two tablespoons of butter that I melted and then whisked in some flour, two tablespoons of flour, until I had a blonde roux. And then I added two cups of milk, and now I'm just going to give that a little bit of nutmeg, just to flavor it a little bit. And you want that bechamel thick enough to coat a spoon, so that's about the thickness that you want. This is going to go into our meatballs, so we want that to cool down. So how do you make Tuscan meatballs? Well, come with me to the refrigerator and I'll tell you because you actually have to start early in the day or the day before. Because this is a meatball that starts with cooked meat. Yes, cooked meat. And here is what I have. This is a chuck roast. So you want a cut of meat that you're going to boil. Tuscan meatballs start with some sort of boiled meat. You could use turkey, you could use pork. Today I'm using a chuck roast, and this is a chuck roast that I cooked, cooled, and now I'm going to grind up. So the best thing to do is to put that into a food processor. So this is about one pound of chuck roast, boiled, cooled, and cut up. And we want to get that into a really fine mince. Very fine. The texture of these meatballs is absolutely very, very fine. And so pulse it up a couple of times until it looks fine enough that when you take off the top, you can take it and kind of squeeze it between your hands so it holds together. That's the texture that you want. So once you have that done, you can just put it into a bowl. And now we can go on to add the other ingredients for the meatball. So there's a pound of the chuck roast. And then to flavor this, you want to have some mortadella. Mortadella is a cooked pork product that comes from the region of Emilia Romagna, but you find it everywhere in Italy. And this is what it looks like when you buy it. You see it's very thinly sliced. It's the original bologna. This is true bologna, co coming from around the area of Bologna. And when you buy it, you buy it in very thin slices, and you see it has creamy white flecks of lard, and it's often studded with pistachio nuts, and sometimes with black peppercorns. So I want about four slices of that, and that's going to go right into the food processor. And we're going to mince that up as well. This is going to be added right to our meat mixture. This is so easy and so delicious, but also very, very different. 
So now the mortadella gets added to the chuck roast. And with this, we want to have some porcini mushrooms. And I know exactly what you're saying. Where am I going to find porcini mushrooms? Well, believe me, you can buy them dried. Here they are. This is how you get them when you buy them in the store, dried porcini. Of course, if you had fresh, that would be even better. And when you get them home, you need to soak them. So here I just put about a quarter of a cup of porcini mushrooms in a little bit of water. A sieve takes them out, and you can see how they have softened up. So they go right into the food processor with some flat leaf parsley. You want to use flat leaf parsley for this. That's Italian parsley, not curly parsley, which is great if you want to decorate a plate, but it doesn't have too much flavor. And you mince all of this up. And I think you start to get the idea now that all of this is very fine textured. And now we add that to our ground uh, chuck and our mortadella. And then with that, we want to have some cheese. And here you can use Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a cheese that comes from Emilia Romagna, a cow's milk cheese. You want about a quarter of a cup. Or you could use a pecorino cheese, which is a sheep's milk cheese. And then a little bit of salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon, not much, because we have salt in the cheese. So mix this up well. And now we're going to add two eggs to that. I'm going to put the blade right back in here. See how easy this is? Two large eggs. And you know, when you have these meatballs in Tuscany, this isn't something that's served to company. This is something that is served to people that you know. So it's only served to family. So when I was served these, I was considered family at my friend Edis's house. So you want to whiz up two eggs and add this right to the meat mixture. And that's going to help bind the meat. And now we want to mix this up. And we have to add the bechamela to this. So get the eggs in. And if your eggs are small, you may want to add an extra egg or so. Now the bechamela. And for this, we want, oh, about a half a cup. And I'm just going to eyeball that for you. I put a little bit of nutmeg in to flavor this. So a half a cup of bechamela. You see, I'm not using any breadcrumbs with this recipe. And we get this all mixed up. And now we're going to begin to form meatballs, or polpette, as they are known in Italian. This is something that's eaten as a second course. And when I had it at Edis's house, of course, I had it served with salad greens. OK, that looks good. Now we need to get our hands into this. And before we do that, we need to get some oil going. So here I have some extra virgin olive oil heating up in a skillet. And to do it, you want to take small amounts and kind of make this an oval shape. You want the meatball to hold together. When Edis made these, she made them the size of large olives. So you want kind of an oval shape. Something like that. And as you make them, you're going to put them into flour. Now, everybody has a version of making meatballs. Some people bake meatballs. Some people deep fry meatballs. Some people saute meatballs. Well, we're going to be putting ours into olive oil because that's the way that Edis did them. But you could also use a vegetable oil if you did not want to use olive oil. So get them into an oval shape. And you can actually make them smaller than this. But I'm, you know, Lulu's coming over today. So I want to make sure that I have a good amount of meatballs in order to impress her and serve her these. And I know she's going to be making her favorite meatball recipe. So I'll do one more for you. And you see how nicely that holds together? Beautiful consistency. And these are very light tasting when you eat them. 
All right, so there are our meatballs. And now you dredge them in flour. You really want to coat them nicely. Get all that excess flour off. So you don't want too much of a floury taste. Some people like to do these by putting them in egg and then breadcrumb, but I think they're beautiful just the way they are, dredged in flour. And here's our last one. Okay, now we can get them into the oil. And here is my hot oil. And they're not gonna take very long. Oh, maybe about two minutes. And you wanna watch them because you need to, of course, turn them as they're browning. Now, while they're cooking, and let me just give them a quick turn here. So I want them to really brown nicely and they're looking good. I wanna get a little salad ready for you. And for this, we want a variety of greens. So I have some salad greens already in the fridge. So let me get them. All cleaned, ready to go. A little bit of radicchio, some endive, some arugula, all cleaned. And now we wanna give that a little bit of salt and some extra virgin olive oil. I just eyeball this when I'm making salad. Give that a good toss. And then just add some good red wine vinegar to this. So a little bit of red wine vinegar. Before I toss that, let me go back here and see what we're doing. Well, these are looking perfect. Look at that. Look at how beautiful they look. And I can take them out, and they've stayed together beautifully. And when you take them out, you want to drain them onto brown paper. So have some brown paper ready and let them drain. And you want to eat these at room temperature. So there are the ones that I drained. Now let me show you how you have these. You get out a beautiful platter and you make a nice bed of those greens right on the platter. I'll bet you've never eaten eat meatballs like this. You've usually had meatballs with spaghetti, which of course does not even exist in Italy because meat is always a second course. And then you simply arrange these beautiful meatballs right over the top. I just finished making my meatballs, so you arrived in just the nick of time. Don't they look good? They look great, Marianne. Tuscan meatballs. Very good. But I'm all ready for you now, so I got all the stuff that you wanted. I'm going to move mine mm -hmm. out of the way. And uh, should I get the meat? Yes, you should. Okay, I'll get the meat in the fridge, and you get the other stuff going. You want me to start the other stuff? Yeah, of course. Sure. That's why you're here. Okay, okay. Mary. Okay. And? All right. You wanted two pounds of ground, right? Right. Okay. How's this look? And I use my secret ingredient, which is ricotta. Oh, see, now everybody knows. That's <laughs> ricotta. Okay. So how do we want to start? Let me move some of this stuff out of your okay. way so you have some room. Very good. Okay. It's all yours. Okay. So. First, I'll chop the garlic. Garlic. Okay. Or the onion, whatever. All right. Why don't you do the onion? Okay. I'll do the garlic. Very good. And do you want three cloves of garlic for this? Yes. Here's some knives right there. Take what you want. Okay. okay. Now, why is this your favorite meatball recipe? Well, I usually make it on Sundays because my children all come over on Sundays. And how many children is that? I have seven. Seven. Oh, you know, I was one of seven, too. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I learned to cook, really, because I had to cook okay. like you have to cook. Okay, there's your garlic. Now what? Now we're gonna put that into the ground meat. Okay, is that bowl big enough or would you like a bigger bowl? I think you should put it in a bigger bowl. All right, I think I got that for you somewhere, yes. Ordinarily, up early. I don't put this much of onion in too. Mm-hmm, so you wanna put a half onion in? I'll put a half an onion. Okay, good. Very good. And then the meat goes in here. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Now, you know, everybody see. everybody has their own way of making meatballs. Isn't yes, this I true? Know they there are so many meatball and recipes. And nobody makes them the same. That's right. That's what's so great about it. Should I put the garlic in? Very good. All right. Three cloves of garlic. Okay. You've got it. And okay. I, I now use, we don't need this, right? No. Okay. Let me get that out of the way. I use grated cheese. What kind of cheese is that, Lulu? Pecorino Romano. Okay. Sheep's milk cheese. Yes. And I Atta, use girl. a cup of blood breadcrumbs. Now, did you, uh, are these fresh breadcrumbs? Yes, they are. The okay. ground fresh breadcrumbs. A cup. You can get bread and mm -hmm. put it in the oven. Put it in the oven, get it dry and make you your just own. Just put it That's in the, the food processor. Way. That's the best and way. And you just mix it up. Good. Okay. And I put a tablespoon of oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Right. Okay. And, and some chopped parsley. All right. So you want to chop up your parsley. Sure. Here's a board for you. And you use flat leaf Italian. Yes, I do. Just like me. That's okay. really good. It's very good. Now, what, do you serve your meatballs with spaghetti, or how do you serve them? I serve it with, like, any kind of sauce. I usually make, like, um, the, what do you call it? I don't know. You tell penne. me. Oh, penne. 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 Okay. So you use it. She uses a shortcut of pasta. Well, penne. Okay. Good. Well, you know, I made Tuscan meatballs this morning. They're nothing like this, but you know, each region of Italy does things a little differently. Is that enough parsley? That's fine. Okay, good. And I usually put two eggs. All right. Two eggs. You make these big now, big size? Large size meatballs? Yes, I use an ice cream scooper, which... It's a good idea. It makes it more No salt or less and for... pepper? Yes, I use a little okay. bit of salt. Okay, here's some sea salt pepper. for you. You want me to put a little pinch a little of pinch. pepper? A pinch Pat of black pepper. pepper. Okay. And the ricotta. And the ricotta, which we have right here. Okay, and then you mix it all up. Wow. I use my hands. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Okay. Use your hands. All right. Now mix it all up. Mix it all up with my hands. Now, you know, this ricotta cheese, I, you know, I just put a bechamel in mine. To, really? You know, that lightens up the, uh, the mixture. Well, this... And so ricotta, this is a great idea. Yeah. This usually comes nice and moist. Very moist. And are we, and what are we doing they stay nice with and these? firm. Are we frying them? I bake them in the oven on a 350. Yes. For 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. And... If you didn't want to use ricotta cheese, what else could you use? Uh, you can just use Leave it milk. Out. Yeah, milk. Okay. A little bit of milk. Maybe get the breadcrumbs softened right. in the milk. All right, so you're going to need a bake dish because you're right. putting these in the oven. And here's a bake dish for okay. you. Okay. 350, you said? 350 okay. is fine. Oven's on. Yep. It'll be ready to go in a few minutes. And you just get the ice cream scoop, which uh -huh. you dip it in a little bit of water. Water. Or okay, water. let me get you some water. Cold water. Okay, okay here's a little water. Look at how foamy my water is today. Um, All right. That's the Providence water. Yes. <laughs> okay, I knew that. Okay. And I just... Get them and form them. That way you have an and even amount of right. meat making right. even meatballs. You know, my friend Donatia would love this scoop idea. She's a stickler for everything being exact. I can see you're like that too. Very yeah. good. So okay. you keep making balls and you keep wetting your... Yes. Can I make a few with my sure. hands? No, you use the scoop. You could use your hands. I'll use my hands. And you can use the scoop. I know that old water trick too because I usually Because I make have a good size and look at usually mine. my kind of children that when they come over... They want to eat a hefty, hefty meatball. They can they... either have it with pasta or mm -hmm. either a meatball grinder. Now you know in Italy meatballs are eaten as a second course. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yes, a second course. So there's really no such thing as spaghetti and meatballs to be ordered in an Italian restaurant if you were in Italy. You'd get the spaghetti first or the pasta dish first, and then you would get well, the meatballs a second. Of, a lot of my uh, family, they like meatball grinders. Mm-hmm. Now, is a that put in a roll? tomato sauce, yes, on a, on a torpedo roll or okay. either a, a regular... Grind the roll. Are going to put all these in there? You're going to make a lot here. I usually make about 20 to 25. Okay, we're going to have to squeeze those in a okay. little bit. Now tell me about your family. What part of Italy is your family from? From Campobasso. Campobasso. And have you visited? No, I am going in February. Very good. To visit. 
with a few of my sisters. Your first trip to Italy? Yes, my Wouldn't first trip. That'd be wonderful. To first trip to Italy. Okay, you can squeeze them in. Okay, I think you got room here to make two two smaller ones. You take that, and I'll take this one. Okay. Now, how long will these bake for? Uh, between twenty-five to thirty minutes. Okay, dependent. you squeeze in the last one. Okay. I'll wash my hands. Very good. And uh, you know, I'd like you to stay for lunch and have the Tuscan meatballs oh, and we'll have I'd be a few glad of these. To. You want to wash your hands? Sure. Okay, right Sorry, there. Clean this up. Oh, I love it when somebody okay. else cleans my kitchen. Sure. Now these are ready to go, right, Lulu? In a right. 350 right. degree oven. oven for about what, 20, 25 minutes? Right. For about 20 or 25 minutes. And so there you have it. Meatballs Tuscan style and Meatballs Lulu style. Lulu, today we had a ball because we made everybody's favorite, meatballs. Starting right here with the Tuscan meatballs that I made for you that started with already cooked beef. And we added my secret ingredient, which was that bechamel sauce to lighten up the meat mixture. And now it's time for you to give it a good taste test and tell me what you think. Mmm, it's very good, Marianne. I'll accept that as a compliment. And then you made your meatballs with that secret ingredient. Yes, I use ground chuck, a lot of garlic, mm -hmm. and parsley and onion. And my secret ingredient was ricotta cheese. Lulu, my kitchen smells so great with your meatballs baking. I just have to have a piece now. I'm so glad you like them, Marianne. Mm, you know, you're right. That ricotta cheese makes the difference. You know what? We worked hard today. I think you and I deserve a glass of wine. Yes, we do. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. And I'm Lulu St. Angelo. Ciao. Ciao. No, i giovedì sono passato, sono passato Dove? ma a, a prendere i miei, ce l'avevo di cui ci posava.